You don't need to hesitate No, it's not too late And I wouldn't go without you I might be able to ease your mind Yes, it's magic Don't believe me Just watch me watch ya This unraveling threat Ends in your defense You don't even know me And it makes no sense But if you seek, you will find it Yeah, I'm the king of second chances And one more tries I couldn't believe my eyes Caught me by surprise Wherever you go, I'll follow Say whatever you need to say Take my breath away Just keep it until tomorrow This unraveling threat Ends in your defense You don't even know me And it makes no sense But if you seek, you will find it Yeah, I'm the king of second chances And one more tries Welcome back to Flatpak Effects and thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can drastically speed up your editing times of not only 4K footage, but also 1080p footage as well, all inside of Premiere Pro. Now, what I'm talking about specifically here is proxy editing. Now, if you're not familiar with what proxies are, proxies are basically very small compressed files of your much larger high quality files. And Premiere Pro is going to use those proxy files over using the higher quality footage. So it's gonna make playback a lot quicker. It's gonna make your whole editing experience a lot quicker. And there are plenty of videos out there that show you how to do this, but I'm also going to talk about a lot of the problems that you might run into and a few of the things you need to know up front that are massively going to save you in this process. So I've got my little edit laid out here, which is the edit from the beginning of this video, and all of this footage is in 4K. So I can check this by grabbing any one of these clips, just going down to properties, and I can see right here on screen that I'm working with Ultra HD footage and it's all shot in 120 frames a second. So this is where we're going to run into the first issue. Now my timeline is set up at 23 or 24 frames a second. And when I put my clips in and play back, you can see just by scrubbing through the timeline that I'm watching it back in full resolution. You can see there's a lot of lag, right? Even when I play through, yes, it's playing, but it's not as smooth as it should be. It's going to start stuttering at some point. And ultimately this is gonna come down to the type of computer you're using. So if you're using an older computer that's gonna to struggle to play back 4K or like high quality footage, then this is definitely going to help you. So the first thing we need to work out is if you're using footage over 60 frames a second, that's shot in 60 frames a second, then you need to interpret your footage first. So if your footage is under that, then you don't need to worry about this step. You can skip ahead to the next step. Basically, I can check that by just right-clicking, going to the properties, and I can see that this is all shot in 120 frames. So the first thing I need to do is right-click on my footage, come down to modify, and just interpret footage. And it's gonna pop up with this window, and what I need to do is I need to change this to be assume the frame rate. And here I'm going to enter the frame rate of the timeline or the composition that I've set up. So for me, that was 23.976, which is the frame rate that I want it to assume. And I'm just gonna hit okay, okay? So now when I drag that into my timeline, it's now gonna be playing back at slow motion. All right, so it's gonna match that frame rate that we have in our thing and it's gonna play back in slow motion. So that's how I've edited my video. Now that is not actually the best way to use slow motion footage in Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna be talking about this in a later video, but it's actually not the best way to go about doing that for a number of reasons. But just for this video, most people I find use that method. So that's why I'm showing you how to do that specific method in this video. So once we've got that, then the next thing is we wanna create the proxy file. So what I can do is if I select all of my media after I've done that, I can then right click and I'm just gonna come across the proxy and then create proxy. Now, if you're using a version of Premiere Pro in the last two years, so it's 2022 now, so if you're using a version in the last two years, then you'll have these presets built in here. If you're using an older version, then your presets might be slightly different, but basically what you want to look for is you want to be able to choose the format. So here I'm going to be using QuickTime 
and then you can use a preset that's already built in. So here, what I want to do is I want to find one that's a low resolution proxy. You can use a medium or even a higher version, but because I'm using Ultra HD, I want to basically downscale that to a lower resolution. A lot of people tend to like this cine form. I find that ProRes is absolutely fine for what I'm doing. And then you also wanna select this, which is just gonna create a folder next to where all this media is and it's going to then put all the proxies in there. Now, once I hit OK, it's immediately gonna fire up Media Encoder and it's gonna start working through all of those files. So it's gonna start encoding them all. Now, the first thing I want to do is I just want to stop that before it starts creating too many files there. Now, this step only applies if you're using, again, high frame rate footage. If you're using footage under 60 frames, then you can just let it continue on and it's gonna interpret all that footage. The problem with high frame rate footage is if you've interpreted it inside of Premiere, you also have to do that in Media Encoder. So what you need to do is you just need to basically reset these ones here. You also want to go to wherever all these proxies are and just delete those proxies that it's created. Now, again, this is only for high frame rate footage. You need to do this step. Then I'm going to select all of those files again and I just wanna right click and then go interpret footage. Now I can set this to assume this frame rate, which is the same frame rate as that original composition that we've set up and then hit okay. Now that's gonna change all of those files. Now you only need to do that for the ones that are higher frame rate. Now to make sure that they're doing the right thing, when we actually start this process by hitting play, you'll see down here that it's got this little bit of information. So this is the original file and down here is what it's exporting as. So we can see it's downscaling the resolution, but it's keeping that frame rate. That's what's really important. Now, why Media Encoder is working away, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Envato Elements. Now they have thousands of different After Effects and Premiere Pro templates that you can use for your videos. Now for this particular video, I use this title animation, which I found by just searching on Envato Elements, then searching under the Premiere Pro preset. Now, once I found a title that worked for me, all I had to do was just download it, and then I could import that and use it straight inside of my project in Premiere Pro. Now, the best part is you can download any number of these titles an unlimited amount of times, and it's all included for one low monthly fee. Now, I've been using Envato Elements for a while now, and if you wanna check them out too, then you can use the special link in the description below to get 50% off an annual subscription. So once metering Coda has finished creating all your proxies, we can jump back into Premiere Pro here. Now there's one other thing we have to do, which is enable it. So we click this little plus button here and over here you find toggle proxies button. You can just drag that onto the timeline and then hit okay. Now, when we go along our timeline, you can just select that button and it's automatically going to switch over to the proxies. Now you can see straight away without even playing through just how quick the playback or the scrub through is. If I turn that off, you can see we've got the full quality media. You can see it's really struggling to get that scrubbing to playback smoothly. So you can see this has drastically improved our playback speed. Now the best part is, that you can just go ahead and continue to add all your effects. You can even add a color grade. So if I need to go in here, add any color effects, I can just do it all. But it's basically just gonna be a lot faster in playback. So we can see that it's just basically so much faster in making those real-time changes because we don't have to deal with the large file sizes of the full media. So now I can just turn this on and off so I can see the full media if I need to. So now when you come to export, all you need to do is just unclick that button and then you can export your files in full resolution. Now, if you're unsure, you can always just right click on a file and go to properties and you can see the proxy media here. So this is where it's detailing all the proxies. Now, if it wasn't using a proxy, then it'll say no proxy connected or disconnected. Then you can always go in here, right click and go to the proxy and attach the proxy by manually selecting that file and redoing your proxy. 
Otherwise, this is where you can just double check the proxy, make sure the frame rate's right and make sure that the resolution is correct as well. Now, if you need to play back even more, say you, you say your computer was even struggling with that, you can even go in here and drop the resolution of the playback again, and that's gonna help with playback even more. But overall, I think that you'll find that that will just massively improve your playback speed and dealing with anything that you have to do all inside of Premiere Pro. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up. If you love this video, then you can subscribe for more content just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.